Hi, I'll pick up from where I left out uh, in the previous video. So I was discussing chunks and chats, and I said that uh, chunks are identifiable, identifiable generic structures, and I'm going to discuss uh, more chunks. So far I've been talking about conversations and encounters, but there are some chunks which I have not discussed yet. Um, they basically refer to some common storytelling genres in casual spoken interactions. And as uh, this chart shows, uh, which is based on slide 1997, there are four types of common storytelling genres, but actually there are more than these. In the next slide, I will elaborate more than them. Um, so the first type of storytelling genre is narrative. The other one is anecdotes, then exemplums, and recounts. The first, a narrative. A narrative uh, is a kind of storytelling in which we face and resolve a, a problematic experience. Now, the interesting thing about all of these genres is that all of them could include what we call an abstract. An abstract is uh, an attention grabber, something that signals to the other interlocutor that you want to start talking about something. Uh, for example, oh, it reminds me of something that I heard um, two days ago, or it reminds me of a story that a friend of mine told me. Something like that. Uh, it could be as simple as just a word. Oh, wow, that's something like that. So you will um, attract the attention of the interlocutor towards yourself, and you signal that you also want to chime in and talk about something. That's an abstract, which is common among all. Now, an orientation is, um, you know, the, the act of identification of the time, of the situation, and the participants. In other words, when it happened, uh, where it happened, and who are the characters in this story that you want to tell. And then you, after this, you introduce a problem into the setting. That's what we call a complication. Those small wedge signs here in between each of these stages um, actually indicate um, followed by. So first orientation, then followed by a complication, which is the statement of a problem. Then you indicate uh, the point of the story and then you tell how the problem was solved. That's the evaluation and also the, the resolution, if the, the problem was solved at all. Uh, <clears throat> so then comes a coda, which rounds up the events and the story that you've been talking about. And narratives are quite common. So you, you can start by, you know, by telling what happened yesterday, and what the problem was, and how you solved that problem, how you uh, how how severe that problem was, and how you solved it, and then at the end of the story, and then for example, you went back home. It could be about something that happened to you at a bank, at a bus stop, or you know, in the office of um, a doctor or a professor or something else. Anecdotes are stories about um, experiencing a remarkable event. Uh, a remarkable event with uh, a reaction. So uh, the stages include abstracts, orientation, remarkable events, reactions, and perhaps a coda or a conclusion. A coda is actually a conclusion. So according to the de this definition, anecdotes are similar to narratives in that they focus on a crisis. But they have to, they, they have no explicit resolution. They just recount the crisis, but no, no resolution. The crisis is reacted in some way. For example, you express amazement, frustration, embarrassment, humiliation, agreement, disagreement, uncertainty, or things like that. So there's no resolution as opposed to narratives where there is a resolution as well. Exemplum. Exemplum has uh, these four stages, abstracts, orientations, incident, and interpretation. Of course, it could also have a conclusion. Exemplums are told to give an explicit message on how the world should or should not be, and to reaffirm cultural and societal values. For example, fables uh, with a morale to the story fall into this category. So we tell exemplums in order to encourage people to practice some kind of code, some, for example, code of morality or ethical codes, 
um, and uh, therefore um, they uh, basically uh, if, uh, tell us and uh, tell the interlocutor how the world should be and how they should behave and they should not behave. Uh, some of the stories that we, uh, actually most of the stories that we tell our, our kids, our children, uh, are perhaps exemplum because they aim uh, to teach students some uh, codes of conduct or morality or um, ethical rules and values. Finally, recounts. Recounts include abstracts, orientations, record of events, and codas. Recounts retell events that are sequenced in a time order and some kind of evaluation running through them. Uh, the point is to retell events and share speaker's evaluation with the listener. So it's basically when we share our experiences of a sequence of events. So there is no resolution, there is no problem, there is uh, there's no complication here. We just say what happened first, second, third, etc. Now it would be nice to practice uh, identifying these stages in stories. So you can actually Google storytelling and see there, there are many stories, many websites that uh, you know provide different types of stories. One of the websites I have provided is this one is actually from your dictionary. Um, I think it's useful. You can I, I'll provide this link at the bottom of uh, this presentation. Um, you can open it and see, well, you know, a number of different stories. You can go through those stories and identify the macro structure in the way that that has been presented in this slide. In addition to these genres, um, which are up to here, which the narratives, anecdotes, exemplums, and recounts, there are other genres as well, which um, I personally like, especially the observation and opinions, because they are used commonly in academic context. So if you are teaching tertiary level students, for example, you're teaching them English, it would be nice to engage them in evaluating and also practicing these two genres, observations and comments and opinions.